So here's a problem, which I'm going to uh, begin in this video and finish in the next video clip. Let me read it to you, make sure you can read my handwriting. Hamburgers sell for $2.75 each. Soft drinks sell for $1.25 each. 609 of these items were sold for a total of $1,109.25. So how many of each item were sold? Okay, so I want to, you know, again, talk about this issue of units as we begin to work through this problem. And it, it may seem like a lot of work to, to try to think this way and write those words in. Uh, let me show you, once you get used to that habit, then, then you'll never fear word problems again. You'll be good at them. And, and the other comment is that it's these units which drive um, the equations in these word problems. So, anyway, to, um, if we were to start to, be, to solve this problem, you would ask yourself, well, what, what do we need? To, what are we looking for? And, well, let's look for the question. How many of each item were sold? So the items are hamburgers and soft drinks. So let's create variables. Now, should we use X and Y? It's okay, but I think you can avoid some possible confusion in the course of solving the problem, a careless mistake, by using more descriptive letters. If you use X and Y, then you can get those switched easily. But how about H and D? So let me let H equals to the number of hamburgers and D equals to the number of soft drinks. What I can, I like to avoid letter S. S for soft drinks would make perfect sense, but my capital S's tend to look like some of my fives, so that's why I chose D myself. Okay, and I like to use ditto marks, so I'm just working this for my own good. When we present the solution, however, we should probably write it out as a sentence. Now, here's a... <laughs> a lot of students make the error of of not even truly identifying correctly their, their, their variables with the units. Very often in a problem like that, I might see H equals hamburgers. Does it? Are we solving for hamburgers? No, we're solving for how many hamburgers? I've seen other people put H equals 275. Does H equal $2.75? If so, we know what H is. We've already solved for it. You know, what are we solving for? We're solving for the number of hamburgers. I can't tell you how many times where I've had a student where we've gone over his or her test, and they were puzzled about why they got so lost on the word problem. And sometimes my first question is, well, what does this letter stand for? And someone can't tell me what it stands for. And so, doesn't it make sense that if you write a letter down, you should know what it means, what it stands for? You know, don't just put down X and start creating equations. And I really think a lot of students do this. They just write down X and Y and they'll start creating equations, hoping for the best, hoping that it'll work. Uh, that's a very hit and miss prospect. And once in a while it works, but, but sometimes, many times it doesn't. So... Try to turn your mind around on this. What, is, what are you looking for? What do these letters stand for? Number of hamburgers. Okay, so um, we're given two clues in this problem. And just for the purpose of this video, I want to concentrate on this one because the purpose of this video is to um, try to really introduce you to units. So in the next video, we'll start over and work this problem from scratch. And it, and complete it. So I'm just going to look at for the moment um, a total of $1,109.25 was the sales. Okay, so 
if we made over a thousand dollars, where did that money come from? It came from two sources, hamburgers and soft drinks. Now, if you somehow were able to see the pile of money in front of you, one pile came from hamburgers, one pile came from soft drinks. And so, let's try to figure out how much money came from hamburgers, first of all. Now, hamburgers sell for $2.75 per hamburger. And, how many hamburgers were sold? H, right? Mm -hmm. The number we're looking for. You know, if you sold a hundred hamburgers, how much money would you make? Hundred times two dollars and seventy-five cents. That'd be two hundred seventy-five dollars, wouldn't it? Why are we multiplying the number of hamburgers sold times the number of hamburgers? Well, in the more abstract algebra sense, if I multiply the rate at which hamburgers sell for two dollars and seventy-five cents per hamburger times H number of hamburgers. Then, look what happens algebraically. The reason we multiply these together is because this numerator needs to cancel that denominator, which leads, leads to dollars. This is $2.75 H. So that accounts for the money we make from hamburgers. Notice the units on it, it's dollars. And so this algebra term, 2.75H, is, is a quantity. It's a quantity, and but the unit is dollars. And so this represents the dollars from selling hamburgers. Okay, now we'll do something very similar with the soft drinks, and then by adding those together, we'll have an equation, which accounts for the dollars. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I'm running out of board space, and when I work this problem, I want to be able to erase the board and have more room. So, let me conclude this uh, video with, uh, with this little recap about units. If you steadfastly um, ignore the units in a problem, you know, these words which are attached to quantities, then you're taking a great risk of, of misapplying the units. And you may end up doing some very strange things without being realizing it. Recall I said that I've seen many student errors where they add things that make absolutely no sense, such as miles per hour plus miles equals to hours. Doesn't make any sense. Or how about, how about dollar per hamburger? plus dollar per soft drink equal to dollar. That doesn't work either. Or, or, how about uh, gallons of this plus gallons of that equals to 40%. Another misuse of units. So if you're not using units, then there's a very good chance that you can make mistakes. And if you really want to overcome your problems with word problems, this is where you start, is to begin to be patient be patient about learning the units. I'm not saying you're necessarily going to have to write them all the time. I think once you get good at thinking this way, then you can save yourself some writing. But what's a little bit of writing? Just a little bit of effort, isn't it? And so um, face it head on and let's learn about units.